Is the camera on? What are you, are you making a video? What are you filming? Ollie, this is my channel, man. Turn this off. What is going on guys? Will here, welcome to the video. Check the hair out, do you like it? I like it, took quite a bit off. Feel 10 pounds lighter, look 10 years younger, but you know what, that's okay. Today is gonna be a full day of eating. I got quite the exquisite menu planned for today, so get your chef hats on, get your notepads out, get ready, take some notes, and grab a snack, because these meals are gonna make you hungry. So alongside that, we have a full workout ahead, and then potentially, the weather does not look too promising. There's supposed to be thunderstorms, but I do have a swimming lesson planned. Yes, a swimming lesson. My journey from swimming like a paraplegic frog to a majestic dolphin, it is gonna happen. So if it doesn't happen today, it will be in a future video. I promise you guys that. So I'm out right now grabbing my first of two. I've limited myself to two coffees a day now. That vertical diet really opened my eyes to how much caffeine I drink. So I am starving, gotta head home, and you know what, I gotta get this to someone. <laughs> Okay, breakfast time. So we're gonna be making these like quiche kind of things that were inspired by the vertical diet and they're also gonna be Will Tennyson friendly because they are one biteable. This is gonna have two components. So we have the egg component, the filling, and then we're gonna have the outside component, which is like this hash brown type of crust. We're gonna put this in the oven to pre-cook before we add the filling to it, so it's just a little bit more crispy. So all you have to do is, I have a bowl right here. I'm gonna add one egg to the bowl here, just like that. And then what we're gonna do is add some salt, just a pinch, a little bit of pepper, there we go. And then I'm gonna add around, so right here is 50 grams of cheese. So this is gonna be for the whole entire dish. I'm gonna add around a quarter of a cup. Probably looks about, yeah, around a quarter of a cup. And then here I have some fresh rusted potatoes. I grated about two heaping cups of that and I'm gonna add that to the mixture as well. And that is gonna be the crust for our mini quiches. So again, this is a very versatile recipe. Very easy to cook these in a batch and put them in the freezer. They're so good. Again, you can use egg whites if you want to. You can add a little bit more hash, a little less browns, change whatever type of veggies you want. So this is what you're gonna be looking for here in your mixture. And then what we're gonna do here is I have a muffin pan. I just I lightly sprayed with some Pam spray. And I'm gonna coat the outsides of the pan, just like that. So you should be getting around six to eight mini cups of potatoes. And what I did is I have the oven preheated to 400 degrees convection bake. I'm gonna pop these into the oven for around 15 minutes, get them a little bit crispy, and in the meantime, we're gonna do the filling. There we go. Just let that do its magic. Time to do the filling. So here I have three whole eggs. Feel free to do egg whites if you want to. Have some frozen spinach that I thawed out here. I'm gonna add this to the mixture. Again, if you don't like spinach, you do not have to do this. Put whatever type of veggies that you want to. A little bit of jalapeno, because I like it spicy. Just a little bit, goes a long way. Touch of that. A little bit of uh, yellow pepper. And then I'm gonna save here. So this is turkey bacon, I'm gonna add that on top so it gets a little bit crispy. So I'm gonna save that. And then I have this bruschetta mix. Not exactly sure what the calories are, but that's no big deal. You go on my fitness pal, type in bruschetta mix. Something will come up and just use that. Also add my cheese. And that is the filling. I never wanted to drink raw eggs until now. This smells so good. Oh, I forgot the salt and pepper. Who am I? Am I a chef or what? Salt and pepper, always salt and pepper, guys. Jesus. I'm gonna hit myself, give myself a little, come on, wake up, Will. All right, so I think the potatoes are done. They're looking crispy and ooey and gooey and the cheese is all melted and it's turning me on a little bit. So, here we go, time to fill them up. I'm gonna add a little bit of the mixture to each one. Just about a little spoonful. I'm really not good at rationing out these things. I'm a very meat forward man, so go quite aggressive on the first few. Okay, so they are ready to go back into the oven for around 10 minutes, and then we're gonna take them out, penetrate them with a toothpick, and see if they're ready, and then we eat breakfast. So a good chef doesn't just cook well, they clean well too. I like to clean as I go. So when I take my breakfast out, I have nothing to worry about here, all I gotta do is eat. And man, this is especially for you. If you're cooking your wife some dinner, make sure to clean the kitchen. You might make her so happy, things might escalate upstairs, or even right here on the kitchen counter. If you guys are into that kinky stuff. Oh yeah. 
We're good. Okay, so we have eight beautiful mini quiche things. Guess the calories on this. 1,000? No. 900? No. 800? Nope. What it actually is is 715 calories, and the macros to be exact are 49 grams of protein, 62 grams of carbs, and 30 grams of fat. I'm gonna eat this whole entire pan. This is not a serving for one person. This is for breakfast for a family of four. For 715 calories, you can't beat it. Let's see what these are all about. Crispy, soft, spongy, what I like. Oh, wow. Sorry, my taste buds just had an orgasm. That is so good. Now, what we need to do is see if this is Will Tennyson approved, AKA one biteable. Probably not the smartest thing to do as it just came out of the oven two minutes ago, but I like to live on the edge. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna eat my breakfast now, let it digest for around an hour and a half, and then we're gonna go do a chest, back, and biceps workout. So I'm about to get into the chest, back, and biceps workout. So I always like to start off with the chest exercise because I feel like my chest is a lagging body part compared to my back. My back's like my strongest body part. So we're gonna start off with the incline bench press. And I have been stalled on the incline bench press for a long time, haven't been able to add like five pounds for weeks. And I've noticed when I do the touch and go, I have the most problem at the bottom portion. And once I get midway to the lockout, I'm fine because I got the tricep strength. So what that is telling me is that my chest is the weak link. So I'm gonna switch from the touch and go to the pause bench press and work on the bottom portion of the movement. And hopefully as I do this for a couple weeks, once I go back to touch and go, I can pass that plateau. So don't think that if you stall on a lift, you completely have to toss it out. You can just find out where in the lift you're going wrong and see how you can make it work. So it's a lot like a relationship. You don't just get into a fight with your girlfriend and just say, hey, you know what, screw it, we're done. You just take a step back and just see what the problem is and work it out, okay? So four sets of 10 reps, pause bench, let's do it. Always do around two to three warm up sets before I get into my working sets. So I have 215 pounds on the bar. I want my working sets to look exactly the same as my warm-up sets, so let's see how it goes. So now it's time for the main back portion of the workout, which is gonna be the pendulum row. And I contribute like all of my back gains during this quarantine to this movement. I've never actually like consistently done it for a long period of time until now. So I'd like to do this one in the lower rep range, I see it more as a power movement. And then on the day where I do more of like hypertrophy style, like the 12 to 15 rep range, I'll do more of a barbell row where it's not completely off of the floor. So the main difference between the um, pendulum row and the barbell row is that every single rep, you're doing dead stop off the floor. And you wanna make sure you don't bounce the weights. Up, down, and dead stop, up, down. You wanna be going like this. It's very dangerous on your lower back. so. Go to load this up around 245 pounds, five sets of six day reps. All right, so we are back to the chest now. So doing three sets, 10 to 12 reps on the flat bench press. So today my main lift was the incline, but then the next time, my main left is gonna be the flat, but then today the secondary work is the flat, and then the secondary work next week is gonna be the incline. So again, sticking to the higher rep ranges, I've been liking training in the 10 to 12 rep range. And then after this, I'm gonna do some lap pull down, a single arm cable row, and then finish off with some arms, and then that's the workout. <laughs> The compound movements are done for the day. Now it's time to go on to like the cable work, more of the accessory stuff. So I'm gonna be doing the lap pull down. And this machine right here, when, before quarantine even started, I was like, I'm probably not gonna be able to use this for anything. But now, as time has gone by, this has been like my favorite machine. Use it for so many different things. I didn't even know that this seat comes off. So I'm gonna be doing some lap pull down. I'm gonna be getting on my knees, doing three sets, 10 to 12 reps here. And I like getting on my knees for, for doing lap pull downs uh, because it doesn't have that kind of like rest thing here. So it's, you have to be very honest with like how much weight you can go because like you don't have anything like holding you down. So it's all lats. Okay, so two sets down, one more to go, the last and final set. So I have been liking going to failure lately. So this set, I'm gonna go to failure, hopefully fail within the 10 to 12 rep range. And then I'm gonna do a double drop set. So I'm gonna reduce the weight by around like 20 to 25%, do eight reps, and then again, reduce the weight 20 to 25%, do another eight reps and just completely wreck the lats. <laughs> Time for the single arm cable row. So again, on this machine here, sitting on the floor, gonna be using this thing here to put my foot on to help me 
pull it back. So you're gonna notice I'm doing one extra back exercise today, but then the next time I hit chest, back, and biceps, and I do an extra chest exercise, I'll be doing a chest cable fly to kind of even things out with the volume. So again, three sets of 12 to 15 reps here. And a big tip for this exercise is when you come and pull back, you kind of want to twist with the movement and you're going to notice your lats activate much more as opposed to if you're just kind of standing like this. So here, and turn with it, one, two, So the last thing is gonna be some dumbbell bicep curls, three sets, 10 to 15 reps. I'm very patient when it comes to bicep curls. So when you're doing 45 pounds, last week I did three sets of 10. This week I'm hoping for three sets of 11. Then the next week, three sets of 12. Just keep on going up until I get to three sets of 15. Then I go to 50 pounds and just keep on repeating that process. And hopefully the form doesn't suffer, but it's okay to cheat towards the end of the movement. You wanna get a couple good reps in, then some sort of momentum is completely fine. All right guys, last set of the day, then we're gonna grab a quick lunch and then we got some swimming lessons coming up. Quick, quick lunch before the swimming lesson. Before I do, I'm gonna have my five grams of creatine post-workout. Just take it straight up like this. Love it, okay. Now, time for the lunch. So this is a very, very, easy, fast, and great thing to have post-workout because it's very high in protein, good in carbs, and minimal to like no fat at all. It's like an Asian-inspired pita. So this is everything that we have going on here. So a lot of the volume is gonna be coming from these uh, bean sprouts here. So one cup of these, you're looking at around only 30 calories here. So that's gonna make up a lot of the volume of the dish. Then I have some fresh cilantro, and then I cut up some chilies, you don't need a whole lot of chilies because your mouth will go on fire. And then some mango, absolutely love mango. Adds this freshness to the dish that's just unreal. Then I have some chicken breast here that's rotisserie chicken that I shredded. You can have whole chicken breast if you want, I just like my meat pulled. And then I have this very nice sesame ginger dressing. Uh, it's so good. Uh, it's only 20 calories per serving, so I usually use around three servings, which is only uh, 60 calories, so can't beat it. And then I just heat it up a nice pita bread that I'm gonna stuff all this stuff with. And then that is my quick lunch before the swimming lesson that's in 45 minutes. So we better get cooking here. So just gonna add all of this to the bowl here. So this is a great like dish to even have on its own if you don't have the macros for a pita. But if you have a pita, I highly recommend it because all of this is not gonna fit inside. So you basically have a pita and then a side salad. Now there we go. So you got a massive pita, good carbs, good amount of protein, not a lot of fat for your post-workout meal. And then I also here have a nice side salad to pick away at. And that is my lunch. This is like one of the most fresh tasting salads I have had in a while. So the macros for the whole entire thing. So the calories for the sandwich and then the leftover salad you're looking at 590 calories, 54 grams of protein, 78 grams of carbs, and seven grams of fat. So perfect, perfect post-workout meal. Gonna down this, it's very easy to digest as well, so I don't think it will really hinder me in the pool. As you guys know, I'm a fan of a big girthy pita coming out the sides, how I like it. All right, so we're gonna be doing the swimming lessons now. So I put this on my Instagram story a couple weeks ago asking someone to come and give me some swimming lessons because it's pretty, pretty bad. We have a man of the name Chris Anderson coming by to give me a lesson and his credentials are, he swam national levels in high school and he's the Queens University record holder in the butterfly. Don't know what that means. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna wait till he shows up and then see if he can kind of salvage this horrific swimming technique. So the man of the hour is here, Chris Anderson. He is gonna be teaching me how to swim ever so beautifully. So you watched my other videos, right? Yeah, I watched the David Goggins video that you did and I was I was looking at uh, your stroke issues and main big things are your kicking and your uh, your body position. Those are the two main things we're gonna work on today. Okay. And that should substantially improve your efficiency just through the water. So out of 10, my swimming technique, you just, like you say like around like a seven out of 10? Oh no, no. no? <laughs> a little bit, little bit lower than a seven no, out of 10. I put, I put you, you know, 
in around a five ish. A five. Yeah, just okay. you know, you're dragging a lot through the water. You're okay. a bigger guy. You need to just. You, you got a lot of mass that's sinking you down, yeah. so we need to work on getting your body position better so you're not dragging, you're more floating on top. And right. I mean, just like school, I'll take a passing grade. Your legs are a little bit all over the place. It's when you don't swim much, it's kind of un unnatural to get the kicking motion right. If you're not kicking well and you're not getting buoyant at the bottom, Yeah. your legs are gonna sink. And then the other thing too that's contributing to that is when you swim, you're looking forward. And you're supposed to be looking down? You're looking down, so okay. when you look forward, you want, your spine wants to be neutral, yeah. and so when you look forward, you're really sinking the rest of your body down that way. Okay. It's you can kind of analogize it to weightlifting, and when you're squatting, you want to keep that neutral spine. Yeah. Similar thing with swimming. And in terms of fingers, I'm used to going crazy with my fingers. If you know what I'm saying, do these keep just like? I, in terms of what your your fingers are doing, it doesn't matter too much. Like you know, obviously, like don't keep your hands wide like that. Try and keep a, a closed palm. <laughs> So that was your best one yet. Was it? Yeah. It's all about tying, you know, a whole bunch of things together, which is part of what makes it so difficult to, you know, get get a good stroke together. Yeah. Oh baby. We're about to get demonetized here. <laughs> Censored content. Okay, so I'll just do some freestyle just to show you basically what I'm talking about with the the kick and all that and the long strokes. Alright, let's see. Five out of ten. I could just watch you all day. I don't think I can go all day. Oh. I've been out of the I can't either. <laughs> so it's been an hour. Uh, the lesson is complete. I definitely have a lot of stuff to work on. I uh, have some homework to do. We're going to be seeing Chris a few more times on the channel and we're going to be constantly working on my swimming so I can do that Michael Phelps day in the life and not make myself look a complete fool. <laughs> Will's making big improvements. Probably, you know, five, five out of ten earlier today. Now six and a half easy right now. So. You know, we just gotta keep working on that and, and you know, things will come come together. So quick little update guys here. So as you guys can see in the front hall here, my house is going under some serious demolition. So very not ideal, as you guys can hear by some of the banging for filming and stuff. So I rented an Airbnb for 10 days so I can actually film without any noise because it's been a hassle the past couple of days. So we are heading out now to go pick up a key from the, the owner of the Airbnb. And then we're also gonna go and grab a snack somewhere. Don't know yet, but it's gonna be healthy. Second coffee of the day. Not today. Just got the coffee, no donuts. So all you guys ask me, how many donuts do I eat per week? I don't eat donuts every single week. I probably have donuts twice a month. So just going with the coffee, plain and safe today. Do you guys see this cookie right here? It's called the kitchen sink. I'm pretty sure in that one thing there, it's 850 calories. Yes, you heard that correct. Nuts. Thanks so much, have a good day. All right, so salad acquired. Now we have to exit at the back door. I usually like to enter in the back door. We're gonna go eat this in the car because we can't eat in the restaurant. As you guys can see, as all the seats are up. Panera is just such a sad place. It just looks like a hospital. So I got the Fuji apple salad with a bunch of chicken on top. They actually really hooked it up here. So I did no gorgonzola cheese. I swapped that out for feta cheese because gorgonzola cheese is disgusting. And then I said no raw nuts. I love raw nuts, don't get me wrong, but just not on my salad. So I'm gonna toss this with probably one of these dressings. I don't know why they gave me two. That was just completely unnecessary. Then they said, hey Will, do you want chips, a baguette, or an apple? I was like, I want an apple. I'm watching my macros. So we got a Fuji apple salad with an apple on the side and that is my snack. Panera's got some solid salads. They're quite big too. So don't think that when you go out to eat, you have to resort to like bad food. Like if you go to McDonald's, you don't have to get a Big Mac. You can get like a chicken, a grilled chicken wrap. You can get a chi grilled chicken sandwich, swap out the mayo with some mustard. You can make healthy options like wherever you go. There's no excuse. Now I'm a simple man. I like my donuts filled. I like my nuts milked. And I like my cauliflower rice and rolled into a ball. So for dinner tonight, we're gonna be making cauliflower arancini. So arancini is usually rice balls. We're gonna swap out the rice for some cauliflower rice to save up on some calories. So this is a very simple recipe. This is all you need right here. So I got the cauliflower rice, one egg, Parmesan herb seasoning, a can of whole peeled tomatoes, some breadcrumbs, some part skim mozzarella cheese, and then some turkey sausages. So the first step is we're gonna take one of the turkey sausages. The recipe only calls for one, but I'm gonna be eating the whole entire pack because I'm a fan of a sausage fest. So I'm gonna put the pan on. 
medium high heat. And what we're gonna do is take one of the sausages and we're gonna remove it from its casing. Just give it a nice pull, pull your meat. Sausage added to the pan, I'll probably put the rest of these ones in the oven to cook. So what we're gonna do is let this saute and get brown, and then what we're gonna do is add just over two cups, around two and a quarter cups of the cauliflower rice, as well as some salt, pepper, two tablespoons of our tomato sauce, some garlic powder, and some of our Parmesan herb seasoning. Mix it all up, and that's pretty much the base. While the sausage is cooking, I'm gonna start doing the tomato sauce here. So I like to use these San Marzano whole peeled tomatoes. They just taste incredible, and I like it when it's a little bit chunky. And I'm just gonna like kind of break them up a little bit. I love just like eating tomato sauce straight up like this. But I'm just gonna season it really quickly. You don't really need to do a whole lot. There's a lot of flavor in these tomatoes already. But again, just gonna go a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, a little bit of uh, crushed red peppers. Again, I like it spicy. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. Some garlic powder. And then last but not least, some dried basil. So the sausage looks pretty brown, so it's time to add the other ingredients. So just over two cups, so around again, two and a quarter cups. Just gonna measure it out roughly. One, two. Pepper. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of my Parmesan and herb seasoning. Love this stuff. Pretty much just replaces regular Parmesan cheese. Just a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of my tomato sauce here to the pan. There you go, and that's all you need. Filling is finished, as you guys can see, I turned it off. And the key now, if you actually wanna make these into actual balls, is to add half a cup of part skim cheese. I'm gonna put that in, just let it melt and kind of fold in while at the same time the cauliflower kind of cools off. That way, you can kind of easily form them into the balls. And then once this is cooled down, I have the breadcrumbs out, I have the egg wash ready to go, and then we're gonna dip it into the egg, coat it into the breadcrumbs, and then goes into the oven at 425 degrees for around 25 minutes. This would be great in like an air fryer if you have it, or even if it's a deep fryer, but most of us only have an oven, so I'm gonna do it in the oven today. So again, 425 degrees convection bake for around 25 minutes. But I think we're ready to go. Cauliflower has uh, cooled down a bit. And as you guys can see, the cheese really makes it bind well, so it's gonna be really easy to roll into a ball. So let's get started. So it's gonna go the cauliflower into the egg mixture, into my breadcrumb, into the pan. Repeat that process, then in the oven. So I just finished playing with my balls. I got six balls here, quite good size. So I'm gonna go in the oven for 25 minutes and I'll see you guys soon. Oh, I think they're done. Look at that, nice and golden brown. So let's plate these bad boys up. I am so excited to eat. First off, we are gonna put on the bottom of the pan some of our tomato sauce that we made. Just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is add some of my arancini balls. I'm gonna go with four. The more balls, the merrier. Basil, and then last but not least, some of our Parmesan herb seasoning. And there we go. Here is dinner. Like, come on, take a look at that. So for all of this, 915 calories. This includes every single one of these rice balls, the sausages on the side, and then the whole entire thing of tomatoes over there. So this is a lot of food. You can serve a lot of people with this for 915 calories. Okay, let's crack into one of these balls here. Let's see what they look like. There you go. Look how cheesy that is and how amazing that looks. I'm telling you guys, you guys need to try this. One of the best things I've actually made on my channel. Oh my God. You wanna come taste my balls? So I got four balls here. I got two more balls there. And I got three sausages on the side that are waiting for my attendance after that. All that for 915 calories. That's pretty good. Yeah, grab a, grab, grab a fork. 96 grams of protein. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? That's fantastic. 63 grams of carbs and 31 grams of fat. Let's see what you think, Mom. Your balls are falling apart here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. That is some good balls. Yeah. You going in for some more? I am. You double dipping in my balls? <laughs> Those are amazing. Yeah. Really, Thank you. Really good. Yeah. What about that? Those are, those are my sausages. Oh. I'm dealing with those bad boys. You really liked it, wow. Well. So I'm gonna finish my dinner, then go upstairs, pack a bag for the Airbnb, and I'll see you guys there. Okay, currently inside of the Airbnb. It doesn't look too bad. Here's the kitchen. So this is gonna be my home for the next seven days. So Katie and I each got 
um, a low calorie ice cream to end the night off. I got this Briars one and then she got not a moo, like there's no moo in it, like no milk because she's a vegan. So that's what she got here. So we are gonna christen this place by each having her own uh, ice cream and then christen it in other ways. Isn't that right, Katie? So that is gonna wrap up this video, guys. So my total calories for the day was 2,980 calories. My macros will be underneath that right there. So if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.